struggling to learn AWS, you're not alone. Three years ago, I was in the same position wondering if I was even studying the right things. Today, I'm a cloud engineer at a major bank in London, helping others to avoid the same mistakes that I made. Without the right approach, you could waste months learning things that won't get you hired. So in this video, I'll share the five strategies that I've learned that makes learning AWS easier. But first, I know what you might be thinking. There's no secret to learning AWS. It's just complex and takes a lot of time. And this is true. AWS is hard, but we can make it easier by focusing on the right services. Think about learning a new language. Nobody starts out by writing poetry or debating philosophy in that language. Instead, you build from the fundamentals. For example, learning the alphabet, pronunciation, and common words. Only after learning these fundamentals do people move on to more of the complex stuff. And AWS follows the same logic. There's over 200 AWS services. When I first started learning AWS, I was completely overwhelmed by all of these services. Every YouTube video I watched seemed to talk about different services and each beginner's guide pointed me in a different direction. So I did what most people do. I tried to learn everything at once. And that was tough. I felt like I was jumping from service to service and not really remembering much of what I learned. Then I had a conversation with a senior AWS architect at a meetup event. He told me I was making it harder than it needed to be. So his advice was to take it step by step. Start with the fundamental core AWS services first and then branch out. But what are these core services? He recommended starting off with EC2, VPC, and I am. Why these in particular? After all, they're not as exciting as building a website or training an AI model on AWS. But it's kind of like learning to walk. It might be boring compared to running or sprinting, but you can't skip it. And looking back, I think he was right. Almost every AWS solution needs compute, that's EC2, needs to run in a network, that's VPC, and needs security permissions, that's IAM. When you start working in a cloud role, these services will be a huge part of what you use day to day. But how do you know whether you've understood these services? A good measure I like to use is trying to explain the service to others. Imagine if someone asked you, why did you put this EC2 instance in a private subnet? Or how did you set up that IAM role? If you can give them a detailed step-by-step -step answer, then that's a good sign. But before you learn these services, it's something else that you should learn first that will make it a lot easier to understand these core AWS services. Do you remember when you first learned to drive? Imagine if someone put you straight into a Tesla with autopilot without teaching you basic road rules or traffic signs. Sure, the car could drive itself, but you'd have no idea what to do when the autopilot gets disengaged or why the car was making certain decisions. And I think this is kind of the same approach some people take when learning AWS. As a beginner, it's difficult to understand the underlying IT concepts behind things like VPCs, subnets, and security groups. But without learning these fundamentals, it would be like relying on the Tesla autopilot without learning to drive. You know, AWS isn't creating something new. It's just building on traditional IT concepts. VPCs, they're just virtual versions of physical networks. Security groups, they're just fancy firewalls. A lot of services on AWS are built on IT concepts that have existed for decades. So just like how Autopilot is built on top of basic driving principles, certain AWS services are built on top of fundamental networking concepts. As a cloud engineer, networking is unavoidable and comes up everywhere. So this is something that's really important to learn before diving deeper into specific services. But how do you learn networking and how much do you need to know? A good resource I usually recommend is this free networking fundamentals playlist by Adrian Cantrell. This is a playlist that has been designed specifically for AWS learners and acts as a good prerequisite checklist. If you're confident that you understand everything here, then that's probably good enough for now. But here's the thing, understanding networking fundamentals was just the first piece of the puzzle. There was something else I wish I did sooner, which would have made learning AWS much easier. When I first started learning AWS, I tried to do everything on my own. I looked at YouTube tutorials, Udemy courses, and Reddit threads, trying to absorb as much information as I can. But then I noticed something interesting about the most successful cloud engineers that I followed online. They always seemed to know about what job opportunities were coming up, and they also knew about which AWS services were actually being used by companies, not just what was being hyped up in their tech news. In general, I think they were very clued in on what was going on in the cloud world. One day, someone that I follow on LinkedIn posted a link to an AWS meetup event going on in London. I hadn't been to any of these before, but thought I would give it a shot as it might be a good experience. When I got there, everyone was super friendly. They were all working with AWS in different industries and I felt like I was learning a lot. I remember one engineer who was sharing a story about a Lambda function that kept failing in production. And his solution wasn't in any AWS documentation or course. It came from lots of trial and error. I felt like I'd learned a lot about Lambda and AWS in that one conversation. Hearing about how people were actually using AWS services day to day made me understand the theory a lot better. I also listened to some talks about industry trends and learned a lot about what was going on in the cloud world. But I think the most valuable thing for me was meeting other people who were also learning AWS. Suddenly, I 
didn't feel so alone. I met people and we all shared our study strategies, tips and challenges that we were facing. It felt good knowing that there were also others going through the same process and this made things feel a lot less overwhelming. So attending meetups and networking with people really helped me learn AWS. In fact, I actually wish I did this a lot sooner. You've probably already heard about the importance of networking for getting a job. And this is true. But I think just meeting people, going through a similar experience to you makes the learning process a lot easier and definitely more enjoyable. But you know, this won't actually help you learn AWS unless you focus on the next point. Imagine someone trying to learn how to cook. They spend their entire time watching cooking shows and collecting recipes. Sure, they might understand every technique and they could explain the difference between braising and broiling. But the first time they try making a meal for friends, they end up burning everything. You know, watching someone cook isn't the same as actually cooking. The same feeling hit me when I first started learning AWS. I thought I was making progress, but when it came time to build something real, I'd struggled. Whenever I'd finish another video, I'd feel accomplished, but deep down, I knew something wasn't clicking. The concepts made sense while I was watching the videos, but it's a whole different thing trying to build solutions on your own. And I think this is a mistake that a lot of people fall into. But why exactly is this so bad? Well, when you're stuck watching video after video, aka being stuck in tutorial hell, you don't develop a lot of important skills. You don't really learn how to design solutions yourself. You don't learn infrastructure as code tools like Terraform, and you don't see how different AWS services work together. These are all very important skills that are required by companies. But aside from this, it actually helps you learn AWS and remember things. When I watch videos, I understand what is being taught in the moment, but if I don't use any of what I learned, I usually end up forgetting it. You know, it's a similar thing in school too. How much do you remember from your chemistry class 10 years ago? Unless your work is related to chemistry, you probably don't remember too much. So what's the solution? Well, if you're doing a course or watching a video, don't neglect practicing building things in AWS. But I know what you might be thinking. How do you actually find stuff to build? Well, many AWS courses usually include some labs inside. It's tempting to skip through these and go straight to the next video, but I actually think these labs are the most important part of the course, even more so than the theory. Aside from courses, there's many guided projects online too. The two that I particularly like are the Cloud Resume Challenge, where you build a resume slash portfolio website using AWS services and also Adrian Cantrell's free guided labs. But doing the practical projects isn't the hard thing. Studying AWS takes a lot of time and it can be a struggle to balance this with your regular life. But there's a few things that I've learned that have made me more productive and helped me stay consistent in learning AWS. So you know that guy who shows up at the gym on January 1st, goes all out for three hours and then disappears for months. I used to be that guy, not just at the gym, but with learning AWS too. I tried to become a cloud expert in a single weekend, the same way I tried to get six pack abs in a week. Every fitness guru will tell you that consistent workouts are better than irregular intense sessions. It takes time to achieve results. And the same logic can be applied to learning AWS. The problem with intense study sessions where you study nonstop for 12 hours isn't just burnout. It's that your brain literally can't process and retain all of that information. I discovered this the hard way after countless study marathons. You know, these left me exhausted and looking back, it wasn't very effective. I realized that they create this full sense of progress. Sure, you feel productive during those 12 hour binges, but try explaining those AWS concepts to someone else three days later. The real progress I learned happens in small, daily, consistent study sessions. Obviously, if you have a hard deadline, like if you must pass a certification by a certain day, then these intense study periods are needed. But hopefully this isn't the case for most people. When I switched to studying around 45 minutes a day, I felt less overwhelmed and the concepts started to become clearer. It also allowed me to balance everything going on in my actual life too, which is great for your general well-being. But how do you know whether you're actually making progress? I found it really helpful to set goals of what I wanted to learn for each study session. Just like tracking your personal best at the gym, having clear goals to hit gave me a sense of progress. For example, I would set a goal of understand EC2 instance types and when to use each one. I found that this was more actionable compared to something like learn EC2 today. These small daily sessions compound over time. So although it may not seem like you're making much progress at first, you'll be surprised at how far you've come after a few weeks. But although learning the technical aspects of AWS is important, it's not the only thing you need to know to succeed in a cloud job. I've been a cloud engineer for a few years now, and there are some things that I wish I did earlier on. Things that would have saved me months of struggle and fast track my career. So if you want to avoid making the same mistakes that I did, then click here to find out what I wish I knew when I first started as a cloud engineer.